Chris, welcome. Thank you. You've been in Cricket Australia now for almost three years and are currently working as the strategy manager. Is that role as exciting as it sounds? Uh, yes, it is. It is. Um, it's, it's a dream role. Um, for me, it's about being able to work somewhere where success is measured in, in happiness, not dollars. It's great. And so what have been some of the projects you've been able to work on? Um, so as you are aware, we have recently relaunched um, the Australian Cricket Strategy. Um, we've got a five-year strategy in place now that runs until 2022. Um, and my fundamental role, well, at least half of my role over the past couple of years has been developing that strategy. And that's meant going around Australia to everyone within cricket um, and, and fans and players um, and helping them to consider what they want to see in the strategy and what they want to see over the next five years for Australian cricket. You've worked on some major projects, including the MOU agreement, which relates to the players' contracts. This made headlines internationally. And now I don't expect you to disclose any of the details, but can you shed some light on what it was like working on this project day to day? Uh, fascinating, and from my perspective, a very valuable experience um, to be part of. It was uh, a lot of preparation went into something that ultimately became very much about ability to think on your feet and to move pretty quickly. Um, on a day-to-day -day level, it was, so I was responsible for the financial model, um, the player REM remuneration model, and a whole bunch of the modeling um, and theorizing around the gender equity provisions. So for me, that was um, really owning that piece of work, iterating it, and then every time a negotiation principle changed or, or something was agreed to, or not agreed to by the negotiating party, um, which, of which I was part, we, I would go away, update the model, and then um, sort of communicate those implications to the rest of the team. That was my responsibility on a day-to-day -day level. It meant early mornings and late nights and Uber Eats and going to sleep dreaming about Excel, which is uh, it's, it's, it's fun for a couple of months. But that's about it. On the flip side, what have been some of the more enjoyable projects you've been able to work on? Uh, the MOU was definitely enjoyable. Um, I was glad that it wasn't my name in the papers because I think that adds a level of stress at that senior level. But um, I enjoyed that. The strategy development's great because we got the chance to go around the country and to departments within CA and say to people, hey, what do you want to see in five years? And we gave them really broad guidelines to that. And then we were responsible for collating that um, and consolidating it into our one page strategy and then the document that goes behind that. So that was fun. Um, I've uh, been involved in our innovation stuff, in particular the computer gaming strategy, which now sits within the digital team. But um, a colleague and I got that off the ground, um, have done 7 million downloads of an app that didn't exist a couple of years ago created dollars for cricket as well as um, you know, hours and years of fan engagement um, in that product. All sorts of stuff, you know, strategy team, we, so much comes across our desk that we look at and then we direct to other people within the business, um, but we will generally kick the tires of it first. Part of the um, new strategy has been the focus on digital and technology. Can you shed more about what kind of um, our research or what kind of conversations were had that took to Cricket Australia down that path? Yeah, it's an interesting one because we get a lot of people, you don't want the tail to wag the dog. You need to understand what you're trying to achieve and then see whether technology can help you get there. The problem that we get, um, it's, well, it's not really, it's a nice problem to have. It's, it's the enthusiasm of people who say, oh, this VR thing's amazing. Cricket should do something there or, you know, um, how can we use gamification better in our products? It's like, well, hold on, what are you actually trying to do? Are we trying to get people to um, engage better and deeper with the Australian men's cricket team? Maybe VR is a good way to do that, but maybe really good long form journalism is a good way to do that. So um, we're kind of a, a little bit of a, we ask people to step back before they step forward um, and to consider what their, what the why is when they're doing that. But in terms of the research that we do and, and the way that we understand the opportunities out there, it's great to be able to read, like, Sports Techie is a website that I use, um, Verge, all these sort of, ESPN, everything that 
that comes out of America in terms of sports technology, we like to sort of try and stay across and understand how, how that could help us achieve our strategy. Moving away from cricket now, what were you doing before you landed Cricket Australia? Uh, I was a consultant in, uh, well, I was a management consultant at KPMG um, in Melbourne uh, for two, two and a bit years, something about something like that. What tertiary course did you go through? Commerce degree, law degree, and then I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do, so I did honours in economics. Can you recall the day when you received the call from Cricket Australia and they told you you were successful? Yes, I do. Um, I was... I was travelling a lot for KPMG at that point, so I was in Armadale in New South Wales, rural New South Wales, um, flying in, flying out, and I was back in the office that day, driving in an Uber from some client site, and so my boss was in the front seat, and I was in the, in, behind the driver, and uh, Lisa called, and I was like, oh, look, I might have to call you back, and she said something like, you know, great news, you've got it, and I, yeah, it was pretty exciting. What was some of the feedback that they gave you after that successful application? Um, I think the probably what helped me was being able to stand a, stand a step back from um, being driven by the sport, by the desire to work in sport. So I don't have a sports background, um, and that allowed me to make a connection with, with my team. It obviously depends on who, who you're interviewing or who, in, who interviews you and what they want from the role. But the fact that I didn't say, oh, I'm really passionate about working in sport and I'd love to do this and this and this, but I was able to say, this is, these are the kind of things that I want to do and, and whether I achieve them in sport or not um, doesn't matter to me as much as the fact that I want to do these things. And I think that they appreciated that at the time. Has working in sport always been part of your career roadmap? I didn't know that you could be a strategy manager in a cricket organisation. I didn't know that you could do sort of what I would term corporate work or, or consulting work in a, in a sports environment. So no, it wasn't. Um, my girlfriend at the time was contacted on LinkedIn by a recruiter and she was not very sporty. Um, so she passed it on to me. I had a chat and I thought, wow, I didn't know this existed. Amazing, would love the chance. There are plenty of roles in sport that require regular commerce and law degrees as opposed to sport specific degrees. When it comes down to these people who want to achieve those roles, how much does your passion for the sport get tested and what kind of factor does it play in the application process? Uh, it's a good question. It, um, you've got to get the fundamentals right. So being in a strategy role now, I understand the importance of, of really starting with the base um, and you need to know what you want to do because on a cold Tuesday morning in the middle of July when cricket season six months away or four months away, um, you, you don't get out of bed and think, oh, I'm working in cricket, today is all about cricket. It's like, here are the things that I'll be able to do, here's who I'll be working with, here's how I'll be challenged. It happens to be in a cricket environment and I love that, don't get me wrong, um, but you need to be able to demonstrate that you've really engaged with the work and with the challenges and opportunities of the tasks you're doing, um, independent of where you're doing them. Yep. But it, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's the fact that we're working in sport is an absolute dream, um, but it's a bonus, like the, the job's great too. What's your background with cricket and what does working in cricket mean to you? I'm a massive sport fan. Um, I've probably played 300 test matches in the backyard with my brother. Um, we, yeah, the, the way that I think about growing up is which house were we in and what was the cricket pitch like? Um, played formally a little bit too, but have always been a massive follower of the narrative around cricket. So the narrative of sports is, is why they engage people. Cricket in particular has the five day test format, which tells great stories. Um, increasingly, domestic T20 tournaments provide like that tournament structure around uh, the storytelling, which resonates really well. I've always loved listening to cricket on the radio. It's just part, it's, it's sort of the fabric of, of my summer um, on, on field and off, I think, playing, playing and listening. You've been able to progress through your 20s really well. What's been the best investment you've made in yourself? Um, 
A couple of things. So I took a long time at university. I mean, I had a long degree, um, but the first thing I did was an internship in a, in a law firm. And I thought, this is not really me. It doesn't, doesn't resonate with what I want to do in my life. Likewise, at a bank, um, I tried that out for a summer and a bit working 80 hour weeks. Um, and it, I wasn't working with people who, who I connected with really well. And so the first, that, that piece of advice would be take your time. Um, there's no hurry in your 20s. I mean, there's no hurry now. I, I probably won't end up in strategy at Cricket Australia in 10 years time. So it's, it's recognizing that um, and being adaptable. And also trying to, this, this idea of introspection and figuring out what really makes you want to be at your job. Um, so for me, it's, it's the people, the, the relationships that I have with my colleagues um, and the sense of self-worth that I get from doing work that I think is up to, or the, or the best that I can do. They're the two things that drive me. Um, it's not necessarily um, where we're working or, or how much we're getting paid or my title or anything like that. It's those two fundamental reasons. The earlier you can identify them, the better. Um, they'll probably change over the coming years, but, but that really helps. And finally, how much time do you actually get to spend with the players? Uh, no, not a lot, if that's, if that's your driving force. Um, we go to the gym occasionally and players are there. Um, I've met a couple of them up at this computer game filming session that we did in Sydney. Uh, Glenn Maxwell, I've had a little bit to do with. They're all good guys. Um, increasingly, uh, with, the, with the focus on women's sport and what we were able to achieve throughout the MOU, I met some of um, the female cricketers uh, and was really impressed by how engaged they are and how committed they are to growing the visibility of their sport in Australia. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Done. Thanks, Ruben.